Hi guys, I'm very excited to have a reaction video about marriage story movie uh, from a family law perspective. Let's go right into it. I'll read mine. I like the book. For it to really work, you both have to read. I'm not going to. Okay. Um, I just... So this is a situation where they're going through counseling and the counselor is attempting to mediate between them. And at this point in time, I think they already decided to get divorced and this is about getting on the right foot. And it's a really good idea. Um, however, in this type of case, the marriage fell through the cracks so long time ago and they haven't attempted therapy at all. So this type of therapy is um, coming a little too late. So I would suggest um, for this couple, if I were their attorney, to have a co-parenting counselor to do the transition of co-parenting instead of uh, marriage counseling because it's obviously not working. She's a lawyer. She represented me when I left Dennis. Oh, you and Dennis are divorced? I love referrals from happy clients and this is one of the best way to get a lawyer. However, if I were a client, I would... My mom's therapist. Her. She's a lawyer. She represented me when I left Dennis. Oh, you and Dennis are divorced? Since when... The word of mouth is one of the ways to find a lawyer. However, it's not always the best way. Of course, through experience, it's good, but I would also search on Yelp. I would look at Google. I would check out State Bar, California State Bar website for any disciplinary actions to ensure that that lawyer has a really good reputation because that lawyer might have helped her friend many years ago, but since then, things changed. The closeness and connection and the vulnerability in this moment is, is very important. I, I don't know if I, if I personally would um, jump on the couch, I would pass the tissue. Of course, it's always there. I, I probably wouldn't jump on the couch and take off my shoes right away. I, I think for me, it's, uh, it, it's gotta be some, some, um, balance between approachability and professionalism and um, not getting into the friend zone in a way that might confuse the client because obviously the client is now in a very vulnerable position and in, in this type of position uh, I, 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 I do have some, some reservations about this type of uh, closeness with a client and I cannot put my finger on it but it, it does feel on a border of non-professionalism. He hates LA. We're interested in what you want to do. Sounds to me like you did your time in New York. <laughs> this is the type of conversation I would have with my client. This is what we want for you and probably you could see you could see her look Scarlet look on her face when she heard for the first time, this is what we want to do for you, what you want, not what Charlie wants. So Charlie's in, in Washington and she's in um, LA speaking to this lawyer and she's asking her the right questions. Not insisting, not leading, not trying to convince her to stay in LA to get the case she actually finds out genuinely what does her client wants. I love it. He can do some time here, I know. He always said he would, but he never... And the language she uses, you did some time in New York. It sounds like you have your jail time, right? What you're doing is an act of hope. Do you understand that? Yes. You're saying I want something better for myself. You do. And this right now is the worst time. It will only get better. This is so true. This is so true. In most failed marriages, 
when someone is asking for divorce, they want something better for themselves. They want something better for their life. And I think this is the next level of lawyering is to give courage. And this is truly divorce time in one person's life. And I had been through that. And in, in criminal court, the worst people are the best behavior. And in family court, the best people are the worst behavior. Actually, I don't know if it's true, but I do know that in family court, people are really going through the worst time ever. And I get to see the worst out of people. And I can only agree that this is the type of conversation I would have with a client. I have a guest here, you're gonna hand in the envelope. Why do I have to do it? Because Nicole is very good at getting people to do things for her. That's not and this is. But until she was nine years old, she's very seductive that way. No, mom, legally I can't be the one who serves him. It's true. So legally it has to be other than the party someone older than 18 years of age to serve the documents. And there are so many ways to serve the documents. In this type of case, I would suggest to hire a process server, professional process server and serve him. Uh, maybe when he leaves the party, not at the party and not use family members who apparently are not willing to do this kind of service. And if he ever contested the service, it would be really uncomfortable to call sister to testify that she served him. So he picked up the envelope and the question is, did he effectively got served? Yes, technically he did. The sister didn't have to say, I served you. She could have just left the envelope and said, it's for you. The process server or the server doesn't have to hand over if the other person refuses to take it. It's sometimes enough to throw it on the floor. They don't have to force the receiving party to accept the service. Fact, Jack. I charge $950 an hour. Ted is $400. If you have a stupid question, you call Ted. To start, we'll need a $25,000 retainer. Oh, that's more than right. all your financials. We need to do a forensic accounting. Which runs anywhere from ten to $20,000. But if we can all agree right away, it shouldn't get too bad. Right? You were married here in L.A.? Yes, because her mom and sister are out here, and I'm not close with my your family. Your son was born out here. Yes, because, again, her mom and sister are out here, and I'm not... So you got married here. So let's interrupt this conversation. So it's very typical for a lawyer to charge, for the partner to charge a higher fee and associate to charge a less. And he's being very frank. If you have a you know, stupid question about a form, call my associate. And if you have strategy question, then call me. And the estimation of how much a divorce a retainer could be is appropriate, well, appropriate to him because of the rate, but that's ranging even, this movie was in 2019, probably right now it would be double, but it's, it's ranging in, in that ballpark. Typically a retainer starts 10,000, 25,000, depending on the complexity of the case. And this is an LA celebrity case. So I think it's actually on the lower side. I would have expected a higher retainer, but maybe this is a starting artist, and so that's why the retainer is 25. Your, your kid was born here, and she served you here. Yeah, but we lived in New York. Why? Is there a problem? We're gonna have to reshape the narrative. If you're serious about having your child in New York, and this is what I suggest, you take your kid, did you say his name was Fred? Henry. Henry. Why did I say Fred? Well, I have a kid named Fred. You take Henry to New York with you right now. Then we file an action in New York. We make this a New York case. We need to make an argument you're a New York-based family. Well, we are. Otherwise, you'll probably never see your kid outside of L.A. again. Okay, so there are so many things that are going on. Number one... The approach this lawyer is taking is very aggressive, right? 
um, he's actually not really listening. He wants to have the client is telling him, I would like this case to be amicable. I would like this. I would like us to be friends. I mean, this is all about how can we co-parent and this lawyer has his own narrative and he understands that, and it's true, if the child stays in LA for more than six months, it be, will become home state of that child and the divorce technically could be uh, could be handled in Washington state. However, custody related issues are going to be in Los Angeles. But let's see what the lawyer will say after this. Really? No. It's very hard to convince the courts to move a kid. As soon as you let your wife and child leave New York, you made life very difficult for yourself. Yes, but as I said, and that's a true. New York family. That's just a fact. She's here temporarily. Then why do you think she served you out here? Okay. Here's the trickiest part. The moment he got served, the court has jurisdiction in LA. Now, I don't know whether she was there for six months or not, but technically she was not supposed to serve him with the divorce paperwork, only legal separation, if she is in LA less than six months. Regardless, even if she served him with legal separation, if she was less than six months in LA, then the court has jurisdiction in LA. He can no longer file um, legal separation in New York. However, he could file for divorce in New York and it would be two contradicting states uh, because LA would be legal separation and New York would be divorce. That what I would say to him if I were his lawyer. I don't know. But Henry wants to go back to New York. And he I tells don't, about, don't quote your kid. He's just telling you what you want to hear. And actually that's very, very common. Kids tend to tell one parent one thing when they think this is what the parent wants to hear and the other parent the other thing. Trust me, he's telling her the opposite. Let me have the bar. I agree. What's Exit Ghost? Exit Ghost, that's the name of my theater company. You're a director? Theater director, yeah. Anything I've seen? I don't know, what have you seen? You can see the rapport style between his lawyer and her lawyer are completely different. Her lawyer is, has built immediate rapport, immediate. He is looking after, his lawyer, potential lawyer, is looking after money, uh, fight, litigation, and not even looking really in detail. I mean, this whole difference between legal separation and divorce is very important. Production of Electra is moving to Broadway, which is exciting. We have to make sure that money is protected. I mean, it's theater, so it's not a lot of money. I basically put whatever money I make back in the theater. Well, I wonder, do we ask for support? Interesting. From the so again, this is another in a disalignment when <laughs> he's not talking to the client the lawyer is talking to his associate asking for support when he knows it's a completely inappropriate, uh, it, it's going to ruin the relationship. It's going to ruin the whole case. I mean, it's, it's ridiculous. She's not, she, she moved to Washington uh, to support him. He's making more money. It just, it sounds like a, a bullying tactic to me. Nicole, I'm not going to do that. Does your wife's family have money? Uh, her mother has some from her TV career, and her father died. Well, you could say that we don't want her mother to see the kid. Draw her into the case. In that instance, her mother could pay your legal fees. No. Her mother is under no obligation to pay his legal fees. So 
The Family Code 2030 states that whoever has access to the funds, and it sounds like he has $300,000 readily accessible, the court will not award her, grand, her mother to pay his attorney's fees. I'm very close to her mom. Nicole's family has been my family. Yeah, that's going to change. So you see this guy, <laughs> potential lawyer, is going for blood. And I suggest you get used to it. We need to hire a private investigator. Really? I mean, really? Does your wife do drugs or anything? Coke? Not in any real way. Well, we're not going to win if she's the perfect mother. She was addicted to Tums for a while. <laughs> okay, so now you can hear what this potential lawyer is about. We're not going to win unless we find something. So in a family court, I, I don't believe in winning. It's more about what does the client really wants. And winning really, I mean, think about it. There is a joint custody. I mean, for that lawyer, winning would mean he will take his son and move to Washington State. Is it really winning? Is it in the best interest of a child? And I would say that lawyer should be proposing co-parenting, figuring out a way, but he's not looking after that. He, he's not even caring about that child. It wasn't, it wasn't nothing. She was up to a few the day. Have you noticed anyone following you? No. Well, keep an eye out. But you need to be prepared for the fact that Nora is going to portray you as a neglectful, absent father. But I'm not. You live in New York. You're consumed with your work. She and your kid are at... And that is true. And that is possible that sometimes parents are using divorce and the child as a weapon against the other parent to get more time with, with their child. That book crazy is crazy. Don't get me say, criminal lawyers see bad people at their best, divorce lawyers see good people at their worst. Uh, <laughs> didn't I just say it? I, I don't know if I can judge people like that. Before this is all over, you're going to hate me and Ted just because of what we represent in your life. I'm sure you're right. So oh my gosh, this is so true. I can only attest to that. Clients project sometimes the hate against the other spouse to their lawyers. It's, it's, an, it's, a, it, it's a thing. Tell me the story again. Came out here to see your kid. Yeah, maybe I'm not explaining she this. She serves well. you. We're friendly. We're fine. We're just bitch. trying to figure this out. She's not a bitch. Thanks. But this isn't, we're doing it a different way. And I can't even close to afford this. So I, I don't think it's about affording it. It's it's about they pushed his, uh, his limits. And, and I think that lawyer didn't really listen. And, um, Although he comes back later, but you, you will see in the moment, and that's typically the breaking moment for the client, where the lawyer will lose the client. This is Nora Fanshaw. I represent your wife, Nicole Barber. Hi. Do you have an attorney yet? No. This is a very good question. If he said yes, she would ethically not be allowed to speak to him directly. That's why she asked that question. Okay. I'm calling because we haven't received a response to our filing. Yeah, I've been rehearsing this play and flying back and forth to L.A. You're going to need to file your response. Nicole said there was no rush. It's been more than 30 days since you were served by law. You're meant to respond with me. So the summons, FL 110, states the respondent, he has 30 days to respond. Otherwise, there could be some other legal actions, and I think she will tell him right now what kind of legal actions. I didn't like the first lawyer I met. It says that very clearly on the document you were given. Did you read it? Yeah, but I thought that's just what it says. We, we weren't even going to do it with lawyers. Charlie, I think I shouldn't. Tell Nicole you said sure. I could take my time. Yeah, we'd let you take your it time. Keeps right. Could you hold this? Love scene. What love scene? When I hug Beth. You don't have that. If you don't file your response, we're going to file a request for default judgment against you. All right. This is the point where I think it's an overreach. I know she, her lawyer, uh, Nora, she is really impatient at this point, And I don't know. 
I, I think it's not the client, it's more the lawyer wanting to process, to move this along. But a default in a legal separation, or even if she's there for six months for divorce with a child, I don't think so. Because typically when they file for divorce, they say on assets to be determined, on child custody, on child support, everything is open. In order to file for default, they actually have to, the default judgment has to match the petition. And the petition is probably going to be everything to be determined. So that's an empty threat. Security is about my figure. Charlie? Yes, sorry. Default judgment, what does that mean? Don't we'll be able to lay claim to whatever we want. What do you mean? What if and that's not true. We, they cannot, okay. I had a case where the other side was non-responsive and we had to serve them by publication. And then when we submitted the default package, the court wanted to actually know what the other side half interest would be, even though we couldn't find the other side in order to enter the judgment. So this is not this true. One your apartment, your thing, everything you own. Mm -mm, that's not true. She and I already discussed this. We don't own that much stuff. She can have pretty much whatever yeah, she needs. Look at the number of child support at its highest level and claim for. That's exactly. I mean, the court has to have a level of income and understanding. The it's not true. Full custody. And full custody. F so first, they would have to serve him with whatever alleged paperwork she's going to file, default request for order. And then he will have the time to respond. And it just seems uh, frivolous to me to say that. I mean, that's not even. This is what the law says. And it's not true. Nicole's not going to do that. That means she won't. No, Charlie, I represent Nicole. And she's aware of everything I'm saying to you. I mean, if it's not true, then it's huge mistake on her part because it will set their relationship off, their co-parenting off. I mean, if it's not unethical, it's completely out of line. I just spoke to her this morning. Well, I spoke to her five minutes before I got off the call. If I were him, I would call Nicole and talk to her. Okay, so what do I do? You need to get a lawyer and respond immediately. So then goal, I mean, she will achieve that. The means, I guess, don't matter at this point. He will get a lawyer. She's not going to like it. I'll get a lawyer. Can I get a lawyer here? I don't know where here is. New York. Oh, uh, how he is? No, you'll have to come to L.A. and meet people I'm in L.A. I'm requesting a... If you don't respond in Los Angeles by Friday, you'll leave us no choice. So she's, she's pushing really hard. And she cannot give him legal advice where to get a lawyer. And she shouldn't be telling him about the where to get a lawyer. I mean... Yes, in order to respond in L.A., naturally he has to have a lawyer in L.A., but it's his choice to make. Because apparently your wife already met with him on the 7th of August about representation. But she hired somebody else. Uh, Nora... Fanshawe? But unfortunately, because she consulted with Mr. Cohen already, he's legally barred from representing you. And that's correct. So it's very common when someone speaks, when a client speaks to a lawyer and provides personal legal and gets legal advice, personal information is provided, then there is a confidentiality built and that lawyer is precluded from representing opposing side. You've been divorced four times? Married four times, three divorces. This last little stick cut will... That's why I graduated into family law, to help people survive this painful time. I already really like this lawyer. He is approachable, he has personal experience, he is sharing his own, his own divorce story so he can relate. He's not straight shooter in terms of, let's get the money, let's get the blood. Here's how I see it. If we get bogged down in who did this and who did that and I don't want to pay the two dollars, it'll just cost you more money and time. You know, it sounds so plausible, 
But that's what happens. I have a client who's who has been dealing on the other side with a car that she has been driving since the date of separation and depreciation of the car and claim of these couple hundred dollars. And the crazy part is that that, that other person was making seven hundred thousand dollars and they he has been spending I mean lots of lots of hundreds of dollars to talk about this car. I love to keep expenses down as much as possible. Of course you do. I charge four fifty an hour and I need a ten thousand dollar retainer. And that sounds reasonable. He's not pushing for forensic, he is starting easy. Start. And just I'll to see start. If I can get an advance on the Broadway transfer. And keep in mind you'll have to pay for her lawyer. Oh. And so He's, he's setting up expectations right away from the get-go where the, the higher earner has to advance some of the fees, not all of the fees, about 50 to 80 percent of the other side, the lower earning side, who doesn't have access to funds, very important point. It's not automatic, so he, I think this lawyer is correct in setting up expectations. I didn't. What? Well, at least part of it. <laughs> and, and see the difference? So now he's softening it up, at least part of it. The other lawyer is aggressive and saying, well, should we go after her for spousal support? And this is completely opposite experience. That, that is why it, why it is so good to interview at least two or three lawyers. It doesn't make sense, does it? I mean, you're doing this because you love your kid. And in doing so, you're draining money from your kid's education. It's interesting. It, this is so true. Some, of, some divorces cost everything that parties earned throughout the marriage, and they don't have any money left for kids' education. Oh, so it is. It is. Well, we'll have to respond right away. Your son goes to school out here? Yeah, but temporarily, we agreed. Her pilot went to Ceres, and I wanted to accommodate her. She's often felt we do things on my terms. Be a better husband than divorce. Huh? I guess something like that, but we live in New York. Well, with your kid going to school out here, the court may see it differently. Will we go to court? No, no, we don't want to go to court. Courts in California are a disaster, and that's just how we have to think about it. That's also true. Court in California are busy, they, their schedule is full, the judge has 30 cases on the calendar. The judge really uh, doesn't have much time to dig into a case um, as much as a mediator would, who, uh, who is a private mediator, and spend a day before to review all files and mediation briefs. I'm not sure these are my glasses. Where are you living while you're out here? Um, in a hotel right now. No, a hotel doesn't look good. To who? The court. You just said we weren't going to go to court. No, of course, of course. We have to prepare to go to court, hoping we don't go to court. Okay. You should get a place in L.A. And get a place near her. Looks better for custody reasons. She's in West Hollywood, I don't think. Well, I don't know if I... I mean, I don't agree with this sort of advice. I would say, at this point, I would ask him, what does he want? Does he want to move to New York? And I think the motion to file right away is not to worry about hotel. It's to worry about how to get the child back to New York before six months expired, before the home state situation established. Maybe it's already too late. I, I guess I could rent out a New York apartment. Don't rent it. You have to continue to prove New York residents. And of course, you have a place in LA. Hard to show you all live in New York, isn't it? So, what do I do? I recommend you spend as much time as you can with your son. Yeah? And that is a really good idea because when things go to court, the judge will look at what has been the status quo schedule. If the father hasn't been active and he has been in New York most of the time, then that's what he gets. I think people fight for that time and then they don't even use it. They just want to win. This shouldn't be that complicated. Okay, this is the part of the movie where I think in, in this other scene with her lawyer and with his lawyer, it gets too casual. 
I think for me personally, it's, it's got to be some more concise, more professional. I don't eat during meetings. I don't, other than maybe a piece of chocolate, a cup of tea or coffee. But this becomes, to me, too, too casual for my sake, for my sense. Right? I mean, we're a New York family. I think it's all pretty straightforward, right? I hope so. So, from my perspective, he needs a lawyer, a combination between this lawyer and the other lawyer. The other lawyer I found too aggressive, not listening. He treats his client like he's almost unconscious and, and he's a doctor and the client doesn't know what he wants. And this lawyer is all about peace, and uh, which is great, but he's also not listening. Oh, yes. I see no reason you both love your child respect each other, why they shouldn't be relatively pain-free. Right. And it's all great, these general statements, but he's not asking the client, what do you want, really? I think you have my glasses. That makes sense. What have you been doing? Reading this magazine. And that's the flip side of this casual office home situation where actually someone is taking care of his child. Are you a California lawyer? Yeah. Okay, I'm almost done. I personally wouldn't bring a child to a conversation because now he overheard a lot of things that he was not supposed to hear. This is really, really damaging for his psychological development and any psychologist would, would back it up and any judge I know would say the same. Do not expose a child to any adult divorce related conversations. It can be even an order. I wouldn't expect too much from that cat. What kind of pet do you want? I don't know. I want you to know that eventually this will all be over. And whatever we win or lose, it'll be the two of you having to figure this out together. And this is so this is hitting home. This is so true. And still, the means to get to that point has to be in a way that, that works for the client. Thank you. First person in this process has spoken to me like a human. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. This is, this is really hitting home. Yes, that's, that's the report. For my second marriage. <laughs> I'll try. A lot of parents who are going through What's divorce the... are having this co-parenting situations they, they deal with. And I personally think it depends on the situation whether or not they should talk about the assets and spouse support and everything else. But Usually it's not a good idea because it's going to blow up. This is where marriage counseling could be useful, co-parenting counseling, but it seems that the, the issues are, the both have to be willing.